By the end of this video, we will understand how to calculate the expected value of the product of deterministically related Poisson processes. Let's get started. Insurance claims are made according to a Poisson process, n of t, where t is greater than or equal to zero with rate lambda equals one. Calculate the expected value of n of one multiplied by n of two. In this problem, we have four bullet points of talking through uh, what we need to know before we can attempt this problem. First and foremost is that variance of x equals the expected value of x squared minus the expected value of x squared. This is something I'm guessing you are already familiar with if you pass p, uh, so there shouldn't be any uh, shockers here. The second bullet point is the expected value of x times y equals the expected value of x times the expected value of y when they are independent. So this is just noting that if x and y are not independent, you can't simply break these two things apart. You have to uh, do an integration over the joint PDF or PMF uh, and do that probability weighted value of x times y. But if things are independent, it makes our life really easy and we can just break apart into two separate expected values. The third bullet point is the memoryless property, specifically with respect to the Poisson process for this problem. And all this is getting at is uh, what happens for the first unit of time has no impact on the second unit of time. So we're going to be looking at car crashes. So this is to say, I don't care how many car crashes occurred uh, yesterday. That's not going to influence how many car crashes happen today. Finally, we have N notation. Um, so I have a graphic for this. Uh, and this is really just arbitrary notation. I feel like this is something that could have been explained with words within the question itself. Uh, but since they're just using the notation, we have to walk through what that is. So what we have here is a single Poisson process over the unit of time 2. And all n means is for that same sample of time 2, uh, n of 1 is the number of events, or in this case car crashes, that occurred within the first unit of time. And then N2 is the number of car crashes that happened within the first two units of time. And so, you know, denoted by green versus green and blue. All that is to say is N of 2 is going to be greater than or equal to N of 1 because it encompasses all car crashes that occurred within that first second as well, or first unit of time. Um, so just need to make sure we understand that notation before we can get into the problem itself. So with that being said, uh, just chose to kind of rewrite this problem into something that makes a bit more sense to me. So uh, here I decided to denote A as a uh, Poisson process of lambda equal to 1. And so really A is corresponding to this green portion. And then B, again, a Poisson with lambda equal to 1. So that is, once again, just it's going to follow that same distribution, but here we're denoting uh, this blue section of time as B. And so with, with those definitions, we can then rewrite N of 1. It's going to be equal to uh, that sampling distribution A, where N of 2 is then going to be equal to whatever A is plus B. Um, so again, this is capturing that N of 2 is greater than or equal to N of 1. So with that in mind, uh, we can rewrite what the question is asking. So expect a value of n of 1 times n of 2. So just rewriting that, and for whatever reason, I chose to switch to lowercase. So I apologize for that inconsistency. Uh, but here we have uh, a times a plus b. Once we distribute that a out, we just get the expected value of a squared plus a b. Since it is only addition, uh, we can break those into their two corresponding expected values. So expected value of a squared plus the expected value of a, b. Uh, and then what we can do is notice that a and b are two separate Poisson uh, distributions. So these are independent samples. So the reason we know this is, again, because of that memoryless property. So if we scroll back up, uh, 
how many car crashes happen in green versus blue. Those are totally independent due to the memoryless property. And that's why we can go from taking the expected value of AB and changing that to the expected value of A times the expected value of B. So at this point, we just need to know these three separate expectations, and then we'll be able to solve uh, for the final answer. So first, uh, looking at this expected value of A squared, where A is the uh, value from a Poisson distribution, uh, what we can do is reference our variance formula. So again, that variance of x equals the expected value of x squared minus the expected value of x squared. And the reason we do this is we can simply refer to our formula sheet, um, or honestly, you probably have this memorized again if you took exam P or if you've been studying for MAS1. And so we know that both the variance of x as well as the expected value of x equal lambda uh, for a Poisson distribution. So we can just plug that in here and say lambda equals the expected value of x squared minus lambda squared. And then we can just solve for the thing we actually care about, which is the expected value of x squared for a Poisson process. And that just ends up equaling lambda squared plus lambda. So now what we can do is jump back to this equation and plug that in. So we know that that equals uh, lambda squared plus lambda. And then we know the expected value of a is lambda, as well as the expected value of b is lambda. And then that simplifies to 2 lambda squared plus lambda. And at this point, all we have to do is remember that in the problem, we were given that lambda equals 1. So we can just plug that in and get the answer of 3. And then I just have this all rewritten uh, for all the different notations. So how the question initially asked for it, how we chose to rewrite it, just so it made a bit more sense. Again, thinking of that timeline of green versus blue. And then our final solution of 3. Scrolling back up to the question. We see that 3 falls in the range of C, so C is our final answer. Thank you for watching today's video, and please consider subscribing if you find these videos helpful. Have a good one. Thanks.